It's Sunday. Why are you yelling? <laughs> it's not even funny. I'm so sorry. This is going to be an insane episode. Yeah, it is. It's uh, There's a lot that has been going on in the BDGE headquarters. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like I might cry on the episode. I feel like there's a decent chance of tear. I'm in a good enough mood today. We're a little... I, I, I feel a little buzz from the Marg. Yeah, I'm my buzz is gone from driving a city bike with you. I sobered up so quick. I'm really good at riding that. Yeah, I haven't r- ridden like in the city in a year, and you just... I was going to tell you at first to like make sure that when we go over like holes and stuff, like divot holes, there's no control of that bike. Like the frame is going to come completely at, at, unattached from it. If you hit any curb or something, it's like done. Like that's where like the twelve dollar value of the bike comes into play. Have you broken a city bike before? No, but like I've definitely not been paying attention or like been trying to take a picture while on the city bike and like had one hand and like hit a curb and fucking like almost skirt right into. You've never fell before. Never fell. I don't think. Not that I know. I've taken a lot. I've also have had a lot of blackout rides. So like it's it's possibility that I've. There's a there's a picture of you somewhere just on the floor like in mud. Hundred percent. I would love to put that on my Instagram (laughs) story. Everyone keep every time I put one of the bike pictures up when it's like two a.m. or something. Everyone's like, I can't wait for you to get your first DUI. Honestly, wow. Do you think they would do that in a city? I don't think they have enough time to do that. No, I would probably have to be doing something really obnoxious. Like literally, you see like crackhead smoking crack in front of cops, (laughs) and they're just like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. As long as no one's getting stabbed. I ain't gonna stab anybody. I do it. It's I have a good intent behind it. I have a good heart. When you just want to get home, just a boy that wants to get home. I'm lost. Yeah, you are. That's why we're having this episode today. I agree. I don't think you're crying, and if you do cry, I think it's because it comes out of passion. So I think we should start that off first. It's not a sadness cry. It's just like a. It's like a, I'm lost. Do you feel a little overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, fucking like a lot overwhelmed. This is the most overwhelmed I felt. I don't want to say in my whole life because I can't probably pinpoint another time at the so moment. So right now, up to date. Up to date, yeah, probably. Um, it, there's just enough going on that I feel like I can't control that I just feel very lost. You know, like I can't. It, it, it's, it's like a lack of control on the future, which is not something that I typically Happens. experience or deal with. Yeah, so it's. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. Like I said before, it's just there are a lot of decisions that need to be made in the very near future that will shape my personal life and this business uh, for the long term. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's one of those things where I've always just tried to operate out of good intent and, and hard work. And that's usually worked, but like, you know, when you start to scale things and, and more people are involved and there's more risk and reward and shit, you make the, the wrong choice and it could, be detrimental so that's kind of where my head is at right now i'm just trying to process uh what needs to be done while also just keeping up the juggle of the normal shit that yeah I'm i mean thankfully the the business as itself isn't in jeopardy in a sense like you're you know like the draft guide and everything's going well the app's going well everything is like working it's like more of the behind the scenes where you don't typically people wouldn't know about it since you're so transparent People know kind of like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And now I think this episode is trying to bring everything all together so everyone can be on the same page moving forward. And I think also with the team members, this will also help them understand where everybody is coming from and why certain decisions are going to be made or not going to be made in that. Yeah. Uh, first decision I had to make was the the Discord channel. Mm-hmm. Now, the Discord channel, for, for some of y'all that were in it, some of y'all not in it, was this it's basically like slack where everybody comes together and it's like a it's almost like a gamified version of just team messaging and shit and we started a discord channel last year last off season and basically like the idea behind it was to create a place where we can have you know we're, we're creating more dynasty content and stuff so we want to have a place where most people are not in dynasty leagues so we're like okay if we can create the community around the content and then also create the actual leagues themselves like it'd be cool to have everything together win-win Right, so we created the the Discord, and the first initial choice I had to make was, do we only let this open to Patreons, right? Or do we let it open to anyone that like watches our content, keep it free until we hit a comfortable place and it fills up and it can kind of run itself. 
So the first decision we made, I remember when we started, we we're like, okay, we'll start plugging in the first few videos and, and we left it open for free for everybody. And people started coming in, you know, it was 50, then it was a hundred, then it was 250, then it was 750, then it was a thousand. And we were like, okay. Oh, wow. <clears throat> right. We're like, okay, at what point do you cap it? Do we cap it? At what point do we just keep letting it run? At what point, you know, at what point do we, I, I think the problem was we never like really set a goal behind what the fuck we were trying to do behind it. And we ended up letting it run up to about 3000 people. So I felt comfortable at that baseline. It was something that we put out that even if I didn't have time to work on it or anyone on the team have time to work on it, it would still run itself. Mm -hmm. But in that becomes like a catch 22 because we're so like what we're trying to build is, is a community in which like we are part of the community, you know? Yeah. So yeah. while we've built a product that's cool and it's engaging and it is like a community feel, it felt less and less like while it was a community, it wasn't our community anymore. Like it took a hold of, you know, there, there was like people doing shit that we would never have allowed. Like there was racism and slurs and shit. And obviously we'd ban yeah. them as soon as that shit happened, but there's people like promoting their own shit. And I'm like, if we close this off to just like the actual patrons and discord, like that shit never would have happened in a million years. Exactly. Like they, they, if you're paying for our shit, like, you know us and you know us personally. And like, you know, that's how we want to do it. We opened and up your names on it. You, you got to protect that at all costs. hundred percent. And, and I don't think that was the biggest problem. Like that's, that kind of stuff didn't happen often you know and we took care of it quickly but it was more so the fact that we were just like losing grip with what the fucking thing actually was the product or service we were like offering even if it was free so we we started up a lot of the dynasty leagues i think we ended up putting together like a, between 130 and 150 dynasty leagues which like at scale once we kept doing this could be like a massive thing for big dogs you know just being like the organizer of it and it, it became like we started opening up more and more channels as more and more things were needed. And it got so fucking messy that like every time you go in there, you had no idea like what you were looking for or what you were looking at, right? Or, or where you go to get value. And it was cool that we had a lot of people in it, but like what is what's the value of, uh, of a million people when you can't do one or two things well? So basically, and this was actually, we'll get into the, the whole mic thing, obviously. And, and we've put content out over the last few days kind of addressing it more and more, but we're up to date at this point. Uh, when Mike started his thing, his Patreon, his Discord, like that was the reason I restarted our Discord and not yeah. from like a competitive or hateful place. It was more so like an inspiration place. I was like, mm -hmm. he's right. Like, cause he came to me and he was like, dude, I'm starting my Discord. Cause like the big dogs Discord is like fucked right now. And I wouldn't ask you to restart your Discord. I right? remember you saying, you said that I think off camera to me, like prior. And uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know much of it, but it made sense. Like, yeah. And it made sense. And I was like, I, I agree. Like every time I open that fucking thing up, like my stomach turns, I'm like, I, I don't know what to do in this thing. So I was like, I should restart it. And I could restart it again and open it back to the people that are in there and like cut it down a little bit. But like, at, you know, at what point do you make it black and white? At what point is, is like enough enough? So I was like, I'm just going to open it to the Patreons where right now it's like 150 people and I can interact with any of them at any time. And we kept it super simplified where we have one section where it's just fantasy. So it's season long, it's dynasty, it's uh, mock drafts and it's announcements. So there's four places to go. You know exactly where to go if you need a question answered. And there's a lifestyle where it's like stocks, content creation, uh, you know, swole working out and posting fucking pictures of margaritas like it's legitimately yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it, it's it, there's very very simplified versions of what it was before and it's only people that are really part of the big dogs community so a lot of people when i originally decided i hit up noah one day and i was like yeah we need to clean the fuck up out of the discord and then my my first thought was not like oh let's delete it it's just like we need to figure something out and then i was like you know what we're just gonna clear this out restart the whole fucking thing and um and i posted in the old discord about it and I gave them like a whole fucking brief through it. And they were fucking pissed. Like most of the people were really pissed in there. And they were just like, wow, like you could see exactly like he's money hungry, putting everything behind a paywall. And I was like, at first it got to me. And second, I was like, okay, if you're a part of the community, if you've been following me, you clearly know that that's not actually true. Mm -hmm. But then there were people that were following me that were like, listen, dude, like you put this out here, you let us in. And this has become a valuable thing for us. Maybe it's not valuable for you, but it's valuable for people that are in your community, even if it's not solely just your community anymore. And that's where I was like, uh, you know, like, yeah, it made me feel shitty because I do know that the people that valued my stuff and that people I value in my audience did like this thing. And I was like, fuck, you know, and that was a decision I had to make. That was just my gut instinct. And I was like, do I leave it open and let someone else run? My, my, my overall thing was like, I want as as less possible confusion as possible for the people that support us. You know, if we left it open, it could be like the new Patreon members are like confused. Like what discord am I going into? Like what's going on here? Do I post in here? I'm just like, Nope, we're going to nix the whole fucking thing. Start over. People are not happy about it. I sent out the newsletter this week in the email explaining exactly this, basically the decision to do that. Why I did it? 
the reasoning behind it, like what we're doing going forward. And that was that. It was, again, a good intention decision, I think, for my part. You still think it's the right decision? 100%. I feel way better about it now. Yeah. yeah. I feel good about it. And we get to start from the ground up, build it slowly, and and whatever. So that was the Discord. That was the Discord within the Discord. That's wild. I mean, any time you're going to take something that... And it, it, like you said, it is a catch-22. Because like, if you started from the beginning, it being only Patreon, people were like, oh, you don't want us in. And then, then once you made it, Oh, you have to pay to come in. They're like, "Oh, now you're money hungry." So no one's ever going to be happy. And then yeah, it was you had to make if you can't like hold on to something where you know you were, you guys were like in charge. Did you? Uh, it seems like you guys didn't even know if you guys were in charge. Anymore. No, it was like it, it was, was like, like no, Noah getting, was putting in a ton of work to make all this shit happen for free, and that's what also like pissed me off when I was like, "Oh, we're you know we're offering it to our Patreon members," and like I'm gonna take ten dollars going to Discord. I was like, "Listen, like first of all." Noah ran this shit for a full year, organizing all the leagues for you guys, making sure all you guys were in group chats, making sure you were getting into the right buy-in leagues that were affordable for you. And on top of being a Patreon member, like one, you get access to our hour-long Q&A on the weekend. You get access to my in-season weekly rankings, which I don't put anywhere besides to the Patreon members. You get access to like four or five different things that I'm like, you're not just getting access to the Discord. It had nothing to do with money. It was just the fact that like a lot of people don't understand the feelings that we go through as content creators that I don't feel like underappreciated because you know, it comes through in a monetary way, but like a lot of those people I could tell that were angry were just coming from a place that like they feel entitled to be given something. Yeah. And in a sense that was our fault for putting those expectations up front. So it's a learning curve, of course, like thinking more, if it's going to be a big part of our business, we need to be more uh, thought provoked up front, making sure that over the long term, will this turn into something that, you know, starts taking a, a hold of its own and we don't really have control anymore. And we did think about that up front, but like, I thought it would be a cool thing to have that. I was like less, I was at the point where, you know, last summer I was all about like automation. Like how do I scale up without having to put more work on my plate? Yeah. And like, now I need to find a medium where I'm like still wanting to, to put more work on my plate, but it's good work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah that makes it, sense. It's a, it's a learning curve. Yeah. There. I mean, and you learn, you're doing it and you can't take it back. So yeah, yeah, might as no. well just move forward. Just forget about it. And then, um, if you build it, they will come, right? Hopefully. But speaking on, um, so now Noah's doing this, this Discord by uh, himself, or how, how's that? No, working? I mean, I set it up pretty much. Okay, um, is he going to keep doing what he was doing for the previous one? Yeah, I think the scale is so much lower now. When it's 150 people compared to 3,000, you mm-hmm. don't have... And, and what it was, it was like we'd be we put out a Dynasty video and be like, yo, if you guys want to get into a Dynasty League, come into the Discord. We'd have 200 new people that day. All of them want to get into do not new Dynasty League, so Noah's got to take care of 15 new leagues in a one-day period. Mm-hmm. Where now, it's like we're starting with 150, so we'll be opening up leagues like slowly, so it's it's really not difficult to make it happen. Uh, so I put the whole thing together, basically. It was only like eight channels. It took you know, 10 minutes to fucking do, to be honest with you, and now it just kind of uh, runs itself, and the conversation's Could you make... I know like Patreon has different tiers. Can you just make one tier in Patreon just for Discord so you can get more people in it? But have a little bit, um, so but they don't get the other. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good thought. And to that, I would also say it's more of the wanting to simplify things because you know within Patreon now we have two tiers, and I don't want to open up like a third tier because as as it is, it's like people were like, oh, I'm not paying a dollar per month to get into the Discord. I'm like, honestly, that doesn't even get you in. Like you go on Patreon, it's like there's a one dollar tier, a ten and forty five for the go tier. The one dollar tier literally says Patreon support. This will not get you any benefits of being a Patreon. It's literally just to support the time and the effort, the content, the software expenses, like anything. If you, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. But mm-hmm. like if you want to just throw a dollar a month or something to support the brand, cool. And that's like up to like sixty bucks a month, which is helpful for some software expenses. People are like I'm not paying a dollar a month. I'm like first of all, like that doesn't get you into the <laughs> fucking disc. Like it's just people yeah. not reading and just being reactionary without being like human fucking beings. You know what I'm saying? And when you have an audience of three thousand people in a place, like of course, even if you get four fucking four people out of the 3000 that see it differently like they're going to voice their opinions and then you have 250 other people like hmm you know what he's actually making a little bit of sense now and before you know it it's like you're getting attacked by the fucking hive and they don't even know what they're talking about they don't even know what they're attacking you about you know that sounds frustrating it's it's extremely frustrating because like these are also the people that support you for the most part you don't know which ones really Mm -hmm. are and you have to walk a fine line between my personality where i'm like I'm going to do things that I'm going to beat to my own fucking drum and we're going to do things how we see it, but also being respectful of the people that support me, you know? And it's, I mean, it's not easy, obviously, as you can tell, like this has been a very difficult fucking month for me. No, for sure. And I could see that like what, I mean, I didn't even think discord was even that big of a decision. I think this was like literally the, the best of the worst things in your plate this month. Yeah, but, um, yeah, this was one of them. And then yeah, there's and then, other things that just like piled on and piled on. And like you said, now Mike has his own discord, and 
I'm assuming it's that's kind of like a competition, but not everybody knows the situation. If you are um, part of this channel, that um, Mike, I guess, technically branched off on his own solo um, Patreon, and at first it was okay, a little bit. Like we were like, yeah, um, you know, personal brand. That's what you're all about, and then um, it just kind of brought into more of different employees feeling different ways and. I think it it got bigger than it should have, I think, at a certain point. And I think more emotions than thought processes um, were said. And, like, where did, where where are, we, where are we at on that? Yeah, so I guess, like, quick background. Like, I'm, I'm assuming if you guys are watching this, and most of you guys are probably caught up on, on the whole thing. But, yeah, Mike, Mike uh, came to me and said he was going to start his own thing when I was expecting, you know, the rankings in his content to be inside the draft guide. And it was bad timing, obviously. Uh, so he started his own Patreon, he started his own Discord, which is of course exactly like what we offer already. And I would have liked to have built like whatever, whatever value add he was assuming that he was adding onto what we were doing, just do that within big dogs. And, uh, and he did it and he like started promoting it on our channel. And I also like, didn't think it was that big of a deal, but then I, you know, then I heard your perspective. I heard animals perspective. I heard Scott's perspective. I heard Noah's perspective. I heard George's. Pr and I was just like, people are feeling some types of fucking way about it, you know? And like, I'm always one who's like, listen, I want you to come to me with leverage as a content creator so that when you do ask me, I want this, I want this. Like, I don't really have a choice, but to look at the numbers and be like, you deserve this. Mm -hmm. The disconnect came where he didn't come to me, where he was never like, I deserve this. So before I do this, like, let's talk about it. It was more so like he did it and he didn't do it spitefully. He did it like, because he comes from a, a finance background where like he's, working with these companies and like in order to evaluate his valuation it's he's getting equity in a company or they're paying him x number of dollars for having his involvement in it to show his worth we're a very personal brand where we're all like really good friends or family or whatever and uh we have to operate by a different set of rules and it's not there's also not any playbook to this so yeah. like every real conversation we have about these things is a new conversation, right? And we have to approach each thing differently and we approach things personally. And you want to say, it's not good for business to be in it with like a personal mindset, but like I wouldn't have it any other way. Like I can't mm -hmm. get to an end goal. I can't enjoy the process if I'm not doing it with people that I enjoy doing it with. So like that's not even part of like a discussion that I'm, I'm willing to have. So it just became like a thing of like where he comes from is very finance related, where what we're doing is very personal related. So we need to have a better open line of communication. And we got on a call for like an hour and a half and he was like, first off, like, I apologize. I, I understand now, like after talking to my girlfriend, who's like a, he like opened up, he's like, I talked to her, who's like a therapist. And like, she was like, listen, you, this is the way you need to start looking at things a little bit. And I think we were both off on just not communicating. He felt like, uh, he never felt like part of the team. And what I said to you before was like, there's a, there's an underlying understandment under, under is that a word? Understandment? No, no. right. Understanding. understanding there's an underlying <laughs> understanding yeah sorry when i get in the fucking zone we just go but there's an underlying understanding that like when things do pan out to the level that we all underlyingly think will happen like i'll take care of everybody on the team of course like y'all are my family and mike never felt like he was part of that he always felt like he was just like a content creator within the cog and that's on me for not like communicating that better but i think mike would be someone who could take over the whole dynasty devi side of big dogs and and create products and and like run that side of the bit almost like a subsidiary of big dogs but that side of the business um it's just the fact that we didn't have communication about that so like when he takes it upon himself to just start doing that without like letting me know i'm like dude this is all under big dogs you can't just be doing that shit whenever you want to and then you know it, it, it got to the point where it's like we were too disconnected and we needed to talk about it. And then he got to the point where he's like, dude, it's not like about the money up front. Like I want to know that I'm in this for the long term and that you see me here for that. He's like, I'll literally, you know, I'm up to like 120, 150 patrons, which is going to be, you know, 10, 15 grand for the year. He's like, literally take that money. I don't care. Invest it back into the business, web developers, the people on the team, mm -hmm. whatever, which I obviously appreciated. But again, that feels just, just the way we got there feels really grimy now. Um, I think the whole way it happened just, too many, this, too many like voices, too many opinions, and I understand, like you said, like everyone's a family in this community, and especially the people that work for you. And in the end of the day, you're the person that has to call the shots. And I do, I I love the passion of the team and everything, but like you said, you got to understand that Mike wasn't here from the beginning. Like he doesn't understand that like uh, the family esque um thing about it, and. That's okay, but this was never brought up to him. No one um, brought this up to you or, like, even told, like, made me whisper it to you. No one said this until he made 
the yeah. Patreon. So instead of pointing fingers just at Mike or anything like that, like if there was a problem, this needs to come out. Like this, this all came out at once, and that's not how grown men should be handling this situation. That, that's what I, I got on a call with yeah. with Noah and Scott, and we were talking about it. They voiced their opinions, and I was like, y'all got to understand that I have a lot that I'm looking at, and if you guys have a problem or anyone on the team has a problem, like as much as I try to look out for you, you got to be looking out for me too. Exactly. It's the reason why I say us and we, because like we're together in this. It's not, mm. I can't just be the lead on everything, you know? Like exactly. We're building it together. You need to look at me as part of the togetherness of that shit. I don't, I, I don't have fucking ears and eyes everywhere. And I get it. And like, I understand if some of the other people feel still some, some sort of way, even though if there was, there's a resolution, Mike's still part of the brand, correct? Yes. And that, that was the other thing too, was like, Mike was fully aware. He's like, listen, if this is going to cause like toxicity within the team, even if, even if you think I'm in the right, even if you think like we could work together moving forward, if this is going to be a problem with, for everybody else on the team, like we'll have to go our separate ways, of course. And yeah, I mean, I, I just told everybody and, and the people that you think would be forgiving, were forgiving. And, um, the people that, you know, are still hesitant and in a weird spot with it. I was just like, okay, if you're right, this will play itself out through actions it doesn't you know the call i got on with mike felt good it felt genuine it felt like it was productive and we still need to figure some things out obviously but if his heart's actually in the right place and he's down with the team and he's down with the brand that will show itself over the next whatever year two years three years and if not then boom you guys are right i also told them what i expect up front that it's brand first it's family first it's that stuff first and i want you to act accordingly based on the feelings of the other team members i'm not gonna put you over the team yeah. uh and if something happens there where there's a disconnect and the other team members are like dude there we go then i can go back and be like you know this, yeah and we, i get it this. and you know like you know, we know mike we've met him at the fantasy football weekend he's eccentric he he's just like he's loud he likes to he's just a different style than um some people that are here you yeah. know and that and that's okay like when I first got my job at work, the first thing my director said during the a meeting it was, "You don't need to like me. You just need to have mutual respect for each other." Yeah. See that that's where that's where it gets confusing with us because we're not like a brand like that where it's like, you guys are revenue focused, you know? Yeah. And like we are in a sense, but like, it's almost like if that's the bottom line for you guys, that's still not the bottom line for us though. It's like mutual that, respect is good, yeah. but like, is that enough? That's enough for to take the feelings out. I respect you. You respect me. Let's build from that. And I think that's where this team needs to go right now. Mike's here. You guys had a conversation, you and him. Mm -hmm. And it didn't end with separating. It didn't end, um, you know, and you told the team. And it's it's accepted. Even if they don't like it, it's accepted. Start with the respect. You mutually respect each other. And you guys all now have one thing in mind is BDG. And start from there. Take the emotions out. Take, take everything out of it. And just start from the base of we're both respect respecting each other and then build from there yeah and go from there because that's all you can do because if you don't start from there and you start spiteful this will never fucking work yeah yeah i, I think for the most part it's in a good place i just I'm, I'm 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 curious like what i what i need to be doing now because like you generally think that mike is here for good purpose it's not just yeah yeah like he wants to bring he wants to build up the brand i'm aware that he also wants to build up his personal shit which again i said is not not a problem right like everyone else is very brand focused first and i understand that he's he's gonna he's good enough to get his regardless and i told him this on the call i was like listen like you could you could leave right now be an individual content creator and make mid high five figures probably six figures over the course of a couple of years doing your patreon sell a product or some shit there's no other ceiling like there is being with a brand like us who can turn into a major media player within the sports space yeah so like that's a decision that he obviously has to make and i wouldn't fault like listen, there's a lot of individualistic things that i've done that have got me to this point and you have to be individual individualistic at this point but like i told him i was like there, there's not a lot of room for that within our team because the other team members feel so strongly about the foundation of what we built so you know it, it i do think his head's in the right place uh, I just think we need to figure out maybe more concrete goals on like what we actually need to do to accomplish to make it like, like I said before, enemy of the enemy. Even this is obviously not a good like comparison for it, but just saying that like two opposite things, even though working on something different could be going to the same place. Yeah. You know, and, and that's okay. And like, like you said, Mike also on his side said he never felt part of the team. Yeah. So the guys, you gotta, you gotta take responsibility for, for that as well. Yeah. And if you, if, 
if it works out, it works out. And like you said, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. But these are the growing pains of a business. And I know sometimes they say, like, just cut your losses because they don't see the vision. Mike has a vision. Yeah. It's not like he's here not having a vision. And that's why I, I can full heartedly say when you reach out to me, and I think at some point you were thinking about, like, maybe just breaking it off because there are so many ears, uh, like, so many people talking to you in your ear. And I was just like, he deserves a shot to explain himself. And he did. And you and you feel like it's genuine. And that honestly, at the end of the day, that's what matters. So now the team has to just figure out how to make this work. And then if nothing changes, if Mike still is Mike and then he does something that isn't sitting right with everybody, you guys already had the conversation. Mm -hmm. But until that, you are innocent until proven guilty, my friend. You know, and it's yeah, just like... it's just so. So now it's like, where do we go from here from like an actual community product side of things because he was like listen you could take all the money invest it back into the business he's like we could combine the discords he was like my gut feeling is that combining the discords is not the right thing he was like i will send you the link to the discord you come in and kind of see what you feel and i haven't had a lot of time to dive into it admittedly but my instinct again simplifying our discord down to like lifestyle and fantasy and his is very very He's got like bots set up and shit, which is something that I would like to kind of learn a little bit from him. But he's got a lot of like automation set up and it's very in detail towards like fantasy stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think if we start combining the two again, it's going to start getting really messy really quickly. So I'm trying to figure out like. So so maybe like, like you said, you keep your lifestyle and fantasy and he does the, like the, what is it called? Right. But the fact Discord. that, yeah, yeah. but like the fact, my question now is like, how does that, how does that actually help the brand? You know, in, in like a non-selfish way, like I, I'm not comfortable straight up taking the money. I don't No, The money is his and I think yeah. it should stay his. I think if he put your money where your mouth is, I know it's called Wolfpack brought to you by BDG. And if he does that and keeps the money, then. And if it put, put your money where your mouth is in that aspect, you said he, if you're going to be brand first and then you're not about the money, you're here long term. That solidifies that he's long term. Yeah, I also what 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 else I was saying was like if he had come to me, we could think of a creative way in order to combine these. Like almost almost if I like had his own Patreon package, like mm -hmm. on the Big Dogs Patreon, where it's like you still take the eight dollars a month that you were making, but like they get the value add of being part of our community as well with the other add ons. So like they're willing to pay for like both kind of things in a sense. And um and and then he was like he was like I don't know if that's would that be like cool with the other team members if I had my own Patreon tier? I was like, that's not something you need to worry about. That's like, yeah. a, that's and a you've me thing. you always said bring value. Right. And that's, a, that was, I was like, that's a me thing. I don't even need to explain that. If people are signing up to pay for his fucking Patreon tier, I don't need to explain anything else. Like yeah. they, the market is telling you that he's worth the money. If y'all want to come at me and be like, I want my own Patreon tier. Sure. We'll see what the fucking numbers say, but that's where I'm at with that too. And that, I think that's a perfect example of that. And that's where you have to go with this. I think I, honestly, just tell Mike, like, you had a conversation, like, it should be in the BDG community, but it's different. And like you even said, like, Dynasty, totally different than Fantasy, like, like in a, because it's more intricate, right, I'm assuming. Yeah. So, it should. It's I, just, I, like, more, di it's, like, it's, like, Dynasty is, like, for the people, it's, like, it's, a, okay, so, like, 90 million people play Fantasy football yeah. or whatever, right? I would say, like, fucking 80% of them are fly-by-the-year company, family, high school friends leagues maybe five, three to five percent of those are like dynasty players, okay? And then maybe five percent of those are like the people that would pay for dynasty, like fucking platinum content, like what Mike is doing. So it's a niche of a niche, but it's a really strong loyal niche. So honestly, it, it does sound like that should be separate. I, I, I'm at the point where I agree. I'm just trying to figure out like how we, how we make his separate thing still part of the community from a business plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? The only like, thing I could see is that he says Wolfpack is under BDGE and it has the sim like obviously the symbol and like the yeah. It, but like he keeps the money, like you said, it's his, so he keeps the money. Yeah, yeah. But it's under BDGE, so then you could say that's long term. Hey, and then when you guys are plugging for this, like these are the discords for this. But if you're trying to get into um, mics, this is how you pay for that. You know, and it's just like yeah, yeah that's the thing. It's just like yeah, like we want to grow. If if he's he's under BDGE. But then in terms of like promoting it and advertising it, it's still like direct competition of our the real estate that we built as a YouTube channel going to hit to him. He's making the okay. So, Basically but so no, I, I get it, I get it. But he he put the um, the um, the rankings on his Patreon, right? Yeah. If he puts it back into the draft guide and then you guys both have two different discords, 
But if you pay for the Patreon there or pay for the Patreon there, you can buy the draft guide through each. So that brings it back to BDGE. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out... <sighs> Yeah, th- these are logistics I have to work out. I, w- I want to bring his shit back to the draft guide. I definitely do because the people find a big, big value prop in that. Um, and w- like our first conversations, I was like, so the rankings are not going to the draft. He's like, I only want to have the rankings in one place. And and like maybe his mindset has changed on that since. I didn't, we didn't really talk about like numbers and money realistically in that. And I was like, a- after the phone call, I was like, okay, why don't we just like take, you know, three or four days to kind of like marinate on this and figure out a creative way for us to do this. And that's when you invited me to Discord and I've had a couple of busy days that I haven't really been able to check it out. But that's like the next move is figuring out how we implement the two communities together without like separating the value that he adds onto it. But at the same time, making sure it's still in the, you know, part of our umbrella infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's like tough, for neither yeah. for neither party, the money is the thing. It's just like long term what's stopping him from still like promoting the Patreon. And then if it's not under big dogs, he could just still leave and take everyone there. And this whole time of building him up and that up was gone to nothing, just long-term plans for him to do his own thing. And like, I don't think that's the intention of either party, but like, it's still a realistic practical thing. Yeah. And like we said before, like the people that were buying your draft guide for those rankings, only for those rankings, weren't going to buy that draft guide without the rankings. So yeah. Moving forward, I think it's definitely a different step you have to take, but looking past back, it's not going to um, help figure yeah. out the solution. Yeah. What else we but, got? Yeah. But uh, just like the ending notes on Mike, like I think like Mike does bring value. I think he's a he's a great content creator for you, and he's still part of the brand, and we just got to like, just accept that this was just like a bump in the road, and he was just showing like we said showing his cards but he was like i i do have value and i just want you to see it you know and this is, goes back to maybe you having blinders on on that a little bit and just opening that up like emotionally in the sense of like everybody has to talk you you guys yeah. have to communicate yeah. because letting things boil up to this point is so stupid and this is how it's gonna like burn bridges yeah yeah it was just like it was like what i said I don't, honestly i don't remember if i said this on the podcast already if we were just talking beforehand but like it, it goes it's to the underlying point of the fact that like i i will take care of people when we get there mike just never felt like he was part of that getting taken care of group and i'm like we're still at the very core of like the first five six seven people within the company so it's like i definitely saw him as that he did not see me seeing him as that and yeah. that's where the disconnect came from he's like i'm not good at putting my feelings out there i'm like i, I get that most dudes are not so um yeah i mean we go from here and we hopefully we could figure things out because clearly you know the people in the audience find find mike very valuable as do i it, it's not something i was ignorant to it wasn't like oh he branched off he's going to be fucking terrible at there's no way you know as soon as i saw it i was like yeah he's going to do very fucking well there's no doubt in my mind about it you know and that's half the reason i put him on i'm like he's good like he's really good like he's good yeah. you know he kicked my fucking ass in a few dynasty leagues and that's why i was like yo you should do some shit with us because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what you're talking about you know yeah. everyone else has been like personality related I was like, yeah, I want to bring you on because it'd be fun to make content with you. Or I like believe in whatever the fuck you're doing. But like, Mike, I was like, you're really good at this thing that I see becoming really fucking popular really quickly. And I know you personally and we're friends already. Like, boom, there you go. It's like a matchmaker. Yeah. So let's just see how it plays out yeah. in the end of it. But it's funny. This week I started talking to Scott. I, I probably haven't talked to him in how long you guys been doing this? Four years? He's probably been, yeah, I would say, uh, I, I remember reading the first email from him. I was still at my mom's in Emerson, so. Yeah, and I, I don't think I've said a word to him up until this year. And it was pretty funny because I think we've been nonstop for like the last week. And once you it, get once you get Scott going on the ideas, It's man, incredible, man. I, th- I think he doesn't, he stops at reaching out to me and pitching me just because like he goes on forever and like I don't have time to just like answer everybody. Yeah. And he thinks like he's annoying me if he keeps throwing ideas out there. He, he's a very like high level thinker, you know, so he'll be throwing out like 10 ideas that will be like great in like a five year span or some shit. Yeah. Like and you're that. like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't even eat breakfast yet. I'm your ass. Yeah. Down. Like all great ideas. Like he should run his own fucking business to be honest <laughs> yeah. with you. But like, Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like we're, we're scheming over there. Yeah. It's almost like I'm, I'm almost like might raise capital and just give it to Scott. To be <laughs> with you. Like not worry. Like honestly, like now that I'm thinking about it off the top, like the way that the pres is like, I'm the president, not the CEO anymore. And I've been joking. Like I'm going to hire a CEO so they could like fire me like that. It's actually, it could be like a segue. To Can me. I be a CEO? No. Why? Because you just start too many emotional problems. Yeah, this is, this is all my fault. <laughs> yeah, like everything has gone downhill since we started. Why yelling? Like actually, literally, the last six weeks. Has, the last six weeks of my life have been the most difficult emotionally, and literally that's when we started. Why yelling? I feel great. I'm happy. I'm happy. You feel <laughs> fucking great. I'm happy for you. I'm sorry, man. I'm not happy, but I'm happy for you. This is all need. This all had to come out. But let's start on a happy note with uh, Scott. So he was talking to me about a. Uh, 
just what his vision is. He said, like, the one-year contract is coming to an end of, like, the, what you guys have spoke, spoke oh, yeah, to. That's, that's true. And, um... Yeah, I, like, like, forget we're on a contract. Like, me. It's like Scott. Yeah. yeah. And could, you know what's funny? Sorry to keep cutting you it's off. It's fine. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> I could, like, forget to pay him for, like, a six months and be like, oh, by the way, like, uh, are we going to do a new contract or something? I was like, oh, my bad, Scott. Like, got to pay you for, like, a year and a half. Like, <laughs> thank you for guy. the work, though. <laughs> yeah. I wish I knew what he looked like, but... um yeah, <laughs> he'll show you. I'll send you a nude after this. Oh, sick! I think a few people on the team have seen him now. I think uh, Noah Animal, maybe Noah Animal. And uh, Max. Max called him handsome like four times. It was actually <laughs> really weird. It's like, yeah, he's handsome. I was like, okay, that's like enough out of you. You ever seen Derrick Henry? Yes. Yeah, it's him. Oh, re- re- he's black. Yeah, Scott's black. Big black runs a four or five. Nice. I didn't Motherfucker know. Could trample. <laughs> but he's talking about how he wants to take um like a bigger step in the. Community. You good? Are you done over here? This is about you. Yeah, I'm listening. Don't be fucking disrespecting me I'm like that. Make sure the Discord's running smoothly. <laughs> but <laughs> he was saying how Cunt. with he he only edits Fade the Public for you. Then when we did the fantasy football weekend, he'll do that too. But he feel I, I think what I got out of it, he feels kinda like, you know, underutilized. You know, he could be doing so much more. And for him, it's a hundred percent not about the money. He just has a passion for BDG and yourself. And like we started brainstorming things. I didn't know he was in retail. He used to work in New York. He actually wor- was going to get a job at Nike Town where the Tiffany's is. Um, it was just like funny how like things are connected in retail. And he just loves like my perspective because of like he understands it. You know, he understands the retail life. But um, we just started talking and chopping it up. And I was like, it's not about the money. But you love doing the content. You want to do more. Just doing fade to publics, like you know, not benefiting him. Like I guess, like not emotionally, but like I guess, like I don't know what word I would say. Yeah, fulfilling. He Fulfill- wants to be yeah. more of like a leader. I guess. Yeah, and he was like at his job that he has. He's kind of like an editor in chief, right? So he was like, why not have kind of like that role in BDGE, and then like have a couple like interns or people that do editing and. See, all this shit would be so easy if we were all together. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, it, it's almost like with, with Mike. Like, the conversation I have with Mike, he's like, you look at me as like a content creator, but that's not my end goal. And I was like, you're too good at it right now to not continue to build leverage as a content creator. And Scott is like, you know, I've never seen him like manage a team before or anything, so he might be way better at that. But it's like, Scott's too good at the practice of actually video editing for me to think about utilizing him elsewhere, you know? But imagine, like, Scott running point... With five other editors. Yeah. And you never needing to edit things. Yeah. It's, and yeah. you know how much free, more free time you would have? Like, yeah. that would be incredible. And I was just like, obviously, it's all about capital. It's all about the money that, do you have enough? To- I mean, you pitched me the idea. And like, listen, if the fucking PPP loan comes through, yeah. we just got like a 20 G's to throw towards like payroll. Like, I'm I'm down with throwing him the money and being like, take what take what you want. Give away what you want. Get, exactly. Get like, a couple of these him, kids that like to edit. Give just give him a budget change. and that's it. Like, we always have like these fucking people that clean our case lines at work and i hate them because they always ruin things and i'm like what if we fire them take their salary and s- just give it to each person in the um, like in our store we would all do it because it's extra money so like that's the mentality i had on it on it it's like yeah imagine like hey kid here's uh, three thousand dollars for three months of editing while you're just home doing nothing watching these videos they would die to do that yeah yeah it becomes different it's like yeah, I want to do that. There's the the editing stuff. It's like there's not a lot of stuff that we actually do though that requires a lot of heavy lifting editing. Like Fade the Public is one of them because it's like a very long form show. But like I do my 20, 30 minute fantasy vids by myself that like I can usually take on the portion of that. So it's like a, a line between how much investment capital investment do I really need to do to, to put well, it in or, editing, or is it a luxury? Is, is basically I don't think I'm it's asking. a luxury because then once you have an editing team that can do we don't, here's well, the thing we don't have a, can, we don't have a lot of content people working on editing right now so it's like it's like oh we need to outsource things we don't like it's like we're not really doing that much to begin with on the but then part. can you then you can start doing more content yeah but I'm, what I'm saying is we're not doing that much editing right now like we're doing the content that we would be doing regardless I feel like like right now I'm probably editing like one one two, like maybe two videos a week that are like 20 25 minutes like it, it, what for, about like in season in season, I do a lot of live stream stuff, and I probably have outsourced most of my editing to other people. Like at this point, like I got like Sexy Pat's doing editing for like the Behind the Business series by himself. I've got uh, there's a couple other kids that are like working on shit, which is why I'm saying like it doesn't really. It's a really good idea, I think, 
And maybe it will work right now, but I'm, I don't know if right now it would make sense for us. A lot of the shit that takes a lot of editing is on like Fade the Public on Animal's House and shit mm -hmm. like Animal's House and Bagels and Locks. And, but they and have an editor, right? Okay. They have an editor who like, yeah, like Ike has so much on his plate and I also, I think it's unfair of how much they put on his plate and like, you know, they yell at him for being lazy a lot, but I'm also like, you're doing, he's doing so much for you guys when like, he's not seeing any return for it. You want to talk about like working for me. I'm helping you guys build your brand and your fucking following. You're at least getting something from it for Ike. It's literally nothing. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, it's not like those, those, those channels are like blowing up or anything. So like, I feel bad for Ike, which, which is where I'm like, okay, if I were to make the investments, it would be into that. But then it makes me question, like, how much am I going to invest into that side before we start, you know, seeing a return, you know what I mean? And it's not about the return per se, but it's more about like the, the, the vision of it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, I, I feel like, like you said, Max is so creative. But he's being too creative at this point. Maybe I think he put a lot of on his plate, and I think he, I, I think he's good where he is. But I remember when they first started, we were like we're doing Animal's House three times a week, and I was like, first thing I was like, that's a huge mistake. You're not going to be able to do that. Ike doesn't have fifty hours to dedicate to these Animal House things. Cut it down to two. Cut it down to one. I was like, that's right. That's like where you need to be, and then you can do the other things on top of it. So it's like a slow build, but it's also like this is you know you need to go through these fucking learning curves and these growing curves in order for the things that you want that are like out scaleish and outlandish to, to really be part of your plan. And right now I'm not sure if like the whole editing thing would work. And it's difficult because when Scott edits to fade the public, like he spends a lot of time on that shit. So, so he, like 10 hours sometimes. What I'm yeah. saying is like, so it, there's not a lot of room for what he does best to add onto his plate. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a difficult spot. Cause like, here's the thing, the, the question I have to ask myself as a business owner, I love Scott. So I would never be like, you're not doing this anymore. I'm not paying you anymore. Like I want you to be part of the team forever. But the question, like a normal business owner would ask himself was, okay, for what Scott does for Fade the Public, I can get some college intern to do. And like the difference is, what's the difference of quality in the Fade the Public show from this kid doing it for an hour and a half to Scott doing it for nine or 10 hours? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like, how do I, how do I manage that? Yeah. You know? I just think in the end of the day, like, even though this is a secondary thing to Scott, he, he wants to do more, you know, and that's, and then he, I think he, maybe the budget is to like free him up so he can do more for you. That's fair. I think this is a conversation me and Scott probably have to do because I, yeah. I need to learn his vision more of like exactly. what and he no, I think No, happening. and he said he was gonna, I was like, let me just bring it up while yelling and see uh, where your head's at. But I think it's at a point where he, like, I don't think he's like burnt out or anything. He loves to do it for the public, but I think he just sees in his head like, hey, I have so much value here. If you can free up my time, yeah, I agree. X, Y, Z, this is what I can do. So I, I, maybe it's not more about having a team of editors. It's more of like Scott wants to do more things than just one long form video every week. Yeah, and I, I can see that. Like Scott, someone that like I, I've worked with long enough to know that he adds way more to the team than just you know like he's like a business partner in a sense, and he's been through different startups and like obviously has experience in the retail world, but the tech world and the editing world and all this shit. So it's like he offers a lot that I don't know about. So that's you know that's obviously conversations that I like to have with him. I just um, these are more like things I need to know practically. Like what are we actually going to do? You know? Yeah. Like I said, I th I I think I say it every week. You literally need to have like a quarterly meeting on zoom or something you can't just keep going on and like yeah. <laughs> texting everybody or like i'll get to it i'll get to it because like this is what the shit this I'll shit get happens to it, though. i'll get to it that was loud that comes through crispy i have to pee so bad we're gonna take a pee break are we really yeah well you could stay here and like chop it up with them if you want I, uh, jesus did that just no. are we okay This sucks. I really thought I was going to come into this um, while yelling, like, full-blown, like, m Katie Current, like, knowing how to make Nick cry, and it's not working out. And it's super demoralizing. I'm probably going to cry. It's a long pee break. I'm really bad <laughs> being by myself. On camera, I I'm, I'm too shy for this. Nick, you have a phone call. Can I answer it? It's like two oh one three seven zero. Give me a call, please. I have to get up. What do you mean? This call is literally right there on the thing. Oh. <laughs> where do you? Where were you about to go? I just got an interesting email about the Discord situation from a from a long time listener. Okay. I'll read it. Doesn't look good for me. 
Let's see. Okay. Hey, Nick, long-time listener here is the main jefe. You're allowed to do whatever you want when it pertains to your brand and your future as a 42-year-old man and not some young wet behind the ears young man like the bulk of your audience. I have to say I felt like your tone in the newsletter came across like a martyr. Just be 100% real and say that you wanted to use your audience to increase revenue flow. There's nothing wrong with that. I get that the long-haired boy in your videos made a ton of leagues, but don't act like there wasn't some sort of kickback from Sleeper. There was, no, there was literally nothing. We had zero partnership with Sleeper. This is no different than many of us downloading Monkey Knife Fight and depositing money into you, into it and using your promo code, which I say every single time we're partnering with them and we get a kickback for that. Uh, we do it to help because we aren't cunts and we understand that this is a business and you're bringing on more staff and growing. And with that comes more expenses. I think the biggest issue was the timing of shutting down the discord. It was pretty bad. None of y'all were very active there anyway. So shutting it down seemed like a money grab. Again, you could do that. Just say it and be authentic about it. It's kind of what was the most appealing thing about you from the jump. Just suck that you pretty much took away the ability for a lot of us who enjoy dynasty, finding more startups and fresh fish. Anyway, don't be a martyr. Be the, be the petty, make some fucking money kid you're destined to be be oh be the pretty making some fucking money kid you're destined to be don't apologize for it either hopefully my words resonate here you can simply delete and move along to the next one cheers and this is one of the guys in the discord that's been a follower for a very long time that i like felt uncomfortable with yeah first off like as i said you know you said i'm getting some kickback from sleeper that literally had nothing i'm pretty sure half the leagues we set up to begin with were like weren't even on the sleeper platform which is why when they say that move was for money it our audience onto discord or onto the Patreon platform. I'll show you the fucking analytics. We probably got two new Patreons over the last two weeks. It has nothing to do with gaining more money from it. It was about making the audience more natural to who we are as a brand. So, like, when I hear that shit... like it's you mad. It, yeah, like, it doesn't get me mad. It gets me sad because I'm like, these are people that have supported me for a long time and they actually feel that way. And I'm like, that's not the way I wanted to... It just... It sucks because you're trying to grow a business and you're trying to take care of everybody and for... The money's not your main priority... But everyone's going to think it's about the money, but you do want money because you want to make the business grow for the family. Yeah. And it's just like an ongoing circle of people just going to bash you saying you're just doing it for the money. Yeah. And you saying you're not doing it for the money, but every move looks like it's a money move. Do you do you think I'm, I don't know. Yeah. It gets me thinking that like everything I do when I say I don't do it for the money and then everyone's like, you're doing it for the money. I'm like, am I though? Dude, I, as knowing you to from seventh grade and you being my best friend, You've never cared about money. You literally never have. And I don't know if you actually will ever. And I think that's what people don't understand. Like you literally the other day was like, I'm just going to quit all this and get a $60,000 job. <laughs> and you think 60,000 is enough for you to survive. That's how you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and that's what people need to get. Like, dude, this is not about money. This started as a passion and became a business. And now you have a vision that you want to see grow. Yes. You need money for visions to grow. And it sucks that people think this way, but I understand because at first it was free and now it's not. So it's like you're taking it for the money, but it's not about the fucking money. It's about the vision. That's and what I mean. Like that was that was the discord for like three straight hours. Just messages like that. And I'm just like, dude, like what the fuck, you know? And I, yeah. I like the way I started off was like it was like I probably used some humor where I was like, oh, like called them like freeloaders and stuff, but in like a joking way where I like started off by using self-depreciating humor on myself. And that's just like the way the brand is, you know, like I'll talk shit about myself. I'll mm -hmm. talk shit about you guys if you're in my audience or whatever. And they're like, don't call us freeloaders. I'm like, fuck off. Like I was just joking, first of all, and you got in for free. So it's like, it's not like you're using me. I'm, you know, it just is what it is. Well, I think uh, you got to read the audience at a certain point. You know, these people are going to be mad. Probably yeah. shouldn't have come, come in saying, hey, like, Hunters and contests, like whatever you do, like sometimes you gotta cater to the audience. So that's at that fair. point, like sh that's that's on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean the choice of words was bad, but like that wasn't like the they weren't just like oh, the way you, yeah, what yeah, you yeah. said is yeah. the problem. It was, it was just like you know, yeah, they, it came to that point where they were just like so mad about it, they just like cherry pick anything to <laughs> yeah. get mad at me about. But yeah, like that was like a, an email I just got in real time, and those are the messages I was like, you know, r fucking getting, and I'm just like, ah, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean that's sh that's just gonna. Uh, Fuck with your head, and I could see it. Like, yeah, hey. I'm telling you, literally, this last month has been fucking difficult, man. It's been, yeah. I, I mean, I'm telling you, the fucking London's like you're seeing a, th a fucking therapist. She's like, you need to see this, and I was like, yeah, but like, I open up to you, and I open up to you, and she's like, it's not. You need same. an unbiased opinion where like you could just let the feelings out. Don't feel like you need a conclusion to any of it. Just like she sent me a list of like ten fucking therapists. I'm just like, I'm like, I think you might. Like, have I don't got a time to look at this. I was like, can I hire you to look at this? Even though you just sent me a list, you know? So. Yeah, I see it in your fucking face, man. You're defeated. I am.
It, it's just because it feels like I need to make decisions right now. Honestly, there's only literally one decision you need to make in the next month. And that is where are you fucking living? Okay, so... Literally, that's the only decision that's really on the plate. Yeah, and that's come... Yeah, but that will sway things pretty drastically, I feel like, for a lot of... I mean, it's going to sway your personal and your business. That's... Yeah, so basically, when Animal Snacks came on Tuesday to film Fade the Public, Animal pitched me on the idea of moving out of New York to get a house or something that's a lot bigger because... The original thought for this place was to get a place where we can all work together and almost use as like an office space. Unfortunately, to get a place that's actually like practical in that use case in New York is like nearly impossible unless you're rich as shit. Saw one for like seven hundred twenty five thousand dollars. That would be exactly like you just can't do that. And um, he was like, he was like, listen, I understand you love New York. And like you can continue doing what you're doing and be fine for the next X number of years. And you can kind of like drag everybody along with you at your pace. But if you're actually doing what's best for the brand, like as a businessman and as a leader, like if, 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 you know, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like you're doing it wrong, but he's like, if that's what you care about the most, this is what you should be doing. And I don't disagree with that at all, but there is the fine line of like, there's the pros and cons to me moving out of New York and, and getting a place where we can all operate together and like be together for a long time with a comfortable amount of space. Cause had this actually come out and like COVID not hit and we had two interns here and we had Noah staying here for the summer, realistically, it would have been fun to theorize about and being like, Oh, this is going to be a shit show. Like we're going to work a lot and like do a lot of crazy shit. But like it would have got really, really crazy, not in an endearing way, probably yeah. within a couple of weeks, you yeah. know? So his pitch was basically like, listen, if, 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 if you want to blow the brand up and I agree with him that like, we didn't hit the growth that I wanted to hit this year. I think we could do exponential things if we're all together doing it for like a, he, he basically pitched the idea of a one year sprint, getting a place. And all we do is focus on this for like one year straight all together, just doing it head down nonstop. I'm over here. Also, like I like New York too much. Things are about to open back up. Like he said, this is a personal decision for me um, because I'm going to be fine like financially and whatever, and the brand's going to be fine, but it'll grow slower if I were to stay here and get a place that's not like really affordable. Also have my friend TJ, who I told you about, like I was thinking about getting a roommate because when you're spending 3.5, 4K on rent and you get a two bedroom and said, split it with somebody, you could double the space, if not like fucking two and a half X of space while paying a lower rent. So I'm like, deciding do i re-rent this lease which i feel like is kind of middle in ground right now it's like it doesn't really serve the purpose it's not in a location i like in new york but also not like big enough and easy enough for people to access all the time do i get the second roommate bedroom whatever keep looking in a better place a better part of new york which is also still farther away from a lot of the team members and harder to get to for animal snacks and you know Noah if you were to come to new york or new jersey or whatever um or do we look at like a Hoboken? Do we look at somewhere that's like more like family friendly and really put our money where our mouth is on the one year sprint and see what comes up of it? Because realistically, that would save me a lot on rent. It would save me a lot on like life expenses, obviously, because like just living there is a lot easier for me. And I, I actually think that like we are in the prime of like the growth stage where we have not, I'm not going to say like virality, but like if we hit things right, like we could really, really grow and pop off. And like, this would really be the way to do it. You know? Yeah. Um, my concern though, my concern as there are a lot of them is that in the same way that that was my idea for this place, it just didn't come to fruition. I don't think it's a, like, maybe it's like a physical location thing, but I also think it's a, it's a mental thing. You know, yeah. it's like, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. And just because like, we don't have a fucking front lawn or you don't have a comfortable place to sleep. That shouldn't be the reason why we fucking succeed to an X number fucking level, you know? And I get what he's saying. I do. And I think he's definitely right. I just, you know, I'm, my, my, my concern is like, okay, you know, they pitched me like, he wasn't like really seriously saying, but he's like, yo, down the shore, we can get like a $2,800 a month fucking house that is a giant house with like so much space four bedrooms right next to the beach or whatever. He's like, we could do that and that'd be fun. But like, my thing is like, okay, we're going to do that, but you guys are going to get jobs. Not going to be, I'm going to be by myself down the shore yeah. like, during the winter. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I get and where you're coming from. Though, not too. Me. Like they need, like I'm, I'm 
this is totally say what you, say what you fucking this is feel. not me being a dick at all to uh like snacks and or anybody but like during corona they they did they didn't have a job and they could have stayed here they could have slept here and they didn't like you said so what is the difference now so is it like that's what i'm saying is it really like the one extra train ride that's going to make yeah. you change your life like like i i like i know this is week number 10 or something for us and i'm coming on my days off and even like now it's just like i have to shift my whole days off because i have to do everything i need to do in two days in one day and it's just like that's just something i'm willing to do are you willing to, you guys aren't willing to do that now so what changes if you rent a house because renting a house is it, also it, yeah gonna have expenses like what they're like they're, they're food Sleeping there, like, are, are they gonna like, like you said, they're gonna have a job, and then what? Then they can't film from nine to five. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't see the full vision on it. I get it. When do, people are together, they they create great, <laughs> they create great things. Give me those napkins. Make sure you don't pull out your mic. I think you're stepping on it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, so. I feel like if say you do decide on doing it, like. There's going to be fucking house rules. Like, they, they, there has to be. Because, like, also, too, like, Noah's a kid. What is he going to tell his fucking parents? I'm like, not worried about Noah. He, I think he's got a house in the summer already in, like, Cape May or some shit. So he's not really going to be here. But it's like, I get it. Like, even if they wanted to, be, if I was in their position and I was, like, expecting, like, oh, we could be together. Like, there's there's, there's no, like, living space here. If we wanted to be, if, if we got a house, if we got, like, a big apartment or somewhere that we can all fit comfortably there, it'd be a lot more comfortable to stay there for like two or three days at a time. You know what I'm saying? Rather than like here, like I wouldn't want to live here for three days if I wasn't like in my bed and you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it definitely gets comfortable. There's no like comfortable living style here as like cool and as big as this place is. It's not big enough to like get you. It, it's middle and ground. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I could live in New York by myself and like we could find somewhere else to film or we can find somewhere that's big enough for all of us to like make this shit happen. And like it did, it sparked a little bit in me because I understood where he was coming from, what he was saying. I just like... So what are you leaning towards? I don't know. I don't. This is what I'm saying. This is another fucking position in which like I am trying to figure out. I feel like can you find a studio in New York City and then just like rent an office in New Jersey? So this is no different than the proposition basically that you gave them. Otherwise, other than they're not going to be sleeping there. Like you were you were basically like, why don't you you snacks, animal snacks? Yeah, but like a legit studio at one place. Like, they can go there at any time and film and do whatever, and then... Yeah, I mean, like, I would love them to get a place in fucking New Jersey, or we get a place in New Jersey, and I can come in there to film once, twice a week or whatever. I could crash there for a night if I need to, if we wanted to film shit, and still have a place in New York, but, like, then that's... Just, like, I don't know. Like, it gets crazy, because I'm, 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 like, operating two fucking leases. I'm living in two different places. Like, I need to be a bunch of different places at once. You know, it, this is what I'm saying. Like, this shit is creeping up very, very quickly. Do you I need to make hardly believe... If you went back to Jersey, you'd a be happy because your happy correlates to how you produce. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there are obviously other outside factors at play here. Yeah, you yeah, can't hear you. There are other outside factors at play here, and almost every single one of them leads leads to New York. Um, so yeah, like the, the literally the pros and cons are like. It's it it's couldn't be more black and white. New York is personal. Not New York is a business decision. And everybody says when you're trying to start something up, you got to take your personal out. Yeah, I just don't know if I'm ready to do that, and I don't feel selfish saying that at all. Yeah, uh, it might be wrong for where I see this going, but like it's a decision I have to. It's a really big decision, and it's just something I have to make within the next like fucking three weeks, which is why this is big like, stressful. It's tough. What do you think? Pers I, personally. Yeah. I think even though, like you said, this place is a great spot, it literally changed nothing from being in Brooklyn to being here. Like nothing changed. Yeah. Um, when you visioned this to me, when you like said, the, when I remember calling you telling you not to get this apartment because it was so expensive, the vision that you had is what Max is talking about now. Yeah. And it didn't happen here. Um, and is it going to happen in New Jersey? I don't know. But do I know you're not going to be happy in New Jersey? I do know that. But it's also going to depend. Say you get in Hoboken, I don't know if your life would actually change dramatically because you'll be so close to the city. Like, I'm in Montclair, and it's not that bad. Like, I don't mind the train going in. 
Hoboken's a path train away from being on 34th Street, so it's not that hard for you to yeah, do that. It's not so much like getting into the city. It's it's just like days like today where I'm just like I'm here, walk outside, and 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 like live in the city and just like enjoy and experience the city. And like it might not seem like a lot, but it's a lot for me. You yeah. know. Um, so yeah, it's like, I don't know if I would not actually enjoy living in like a Hoboken or whatever, but I also don't know if like living in Hoboken is really going to be like, if we could actually get an amazing place that satisfies the needs of what we want. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand what he, like the, the, the down the shore thing actually like makes more sense to me, I think, than, than like Hobo like if we just trapped ourselves in a house in like a really cool fucking house on the beach for the year or whatever, we could do some cool shit. You know, we could do a lot of cool shit. It would be really fun. That also like isolates me from, you know, they're not going to be living there. I'm going to be living there. My family's not near, you're not near there. Like the girl I'm seeing or the girls I would be seeing aren't fucking near there. They're here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. again, it, it's, it's pretty much black and white personal versus. What about instead of a one year sprint, you do like a six month sprint. You get a fucking one bedroom here somewhere where you want to be, and then you fucking put the money down for a beach house. It's interesting. It's interesting. Like, but 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 but. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to like I'm trying to equate like what what the real problem is between what we're trying to do and like why it's not happening. Down the shore is a far commitment. You know what I'm saying? Like, are people really going to be... Like, if they get a job up here, they're never going to be down the shore. They'll be down the shore, like, two days a week. Like, but I'm saying, like, not, maybe not the shore, but, like, just that Montvale house you're saying. Like, I'm just saying, like, I, like I if you go... I didn't even hear about this one, but... Oh, yeah. oops. <laughs> well, he's brought up something about Tenafly. I'm like, I'm not I'm yeah. not moving to, like, this... Like, yeah. You wherever know, it needs to be, it needs to at least have a little bit of, like, twang life. to the fucking and That's what I told him. I was yeah. like, you... If you even got Nick thinking about the uh, jersey, like don't try to stretch it to like yeah. the when he fucking up, like, suburbs. He literally like you should see this place in Tenafly. I'm like, yo, like you think I'm about to buy a fucking house in Tenafly right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, like that shit. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. Like Max needs to understand like this is a lifestyle brand, so therefore, like you have to start living this lifestyle too, in a sense of like this is what we're about. Yeah. We go to city, we go fucking brunch, we we might get tattoos, and that's always. A possibility, and that's what people know, because that's what the people we are. You you can't make this brand a suburb brand just because of the house location. If this is gonna happen, it has to happen in a place that you're gonna thrive in, and then that's it. That's what I'm saying. Like I want my cake and I want you too. It's like it, it's like if I'm gonna make it, I need to make it on my ground rules. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's no. a bad way to look at it, probably because it's hard to pull off in New York City. But like that's the only way I see it happening. And I get what he's saying. He's like he's like if you really want to live the lifestyle, if you want to have the lifestyle brand. We can't afford it in New York City. Like, if you want to have the lifestyle brand, we can't bank on amazing lifestyle content coming in one hour a week or something like that. He's like, we need to be together more for days at a time. And the content that we can capture doing that would be significant. And I agree wholeheartedly. I'm just like. This brand would di like die in a, a town. Yeah. Yeah. So 100%. that is out. But if you can find a place in Hoboken that fits the criteria, I can see why you would look into it because it's close enough to the city. It's like you, you have your cake there, kind of. Um, down, down the shore for a summer kind of intrigues me a little bit. I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't I think mean, so Because it kind of fulfills both voids of... I wonder how much a house down the shore... You know what I'm thinking about, though? Like, a house down the shore, rent-wise, has to be really expensive. Almost has to be New York City levels, no? Because it's like, but it's I'm down not, the shore. I'm not saying, like, we have cars, too, so we don't need to be, like, right in this beach yeah, we do. it's like saying like we don't need to be in new york we could be in queens it's like nah people nah, love queens nah, son, we doing it <laughs> we if we're doing it we doing it but like also i don't want to like go down the shore for the summer i like do but like i don't i don't want that to be the home base for me like i you know what i mean like i have to move my whole life wherever i go for the next thing yeah yeah <laughs> damn so i don't know man it's that's a fucking tough decision Yes. But you have to make it soon. Thanks. <laughs> uh, honestly, this conversation didn't go as I planned. I don't know why. How did you plan? What do you mean? I just wanted you to cry on my shoulder, nah. essentially. You know what it is? I've talked about it so much over the last week to yeah. like so many different people that I think I'm 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 starting to like get my head around different ideas and like starting to take the emotions out of it a little bit at a time. So I'm a little bit more 
grounded to it or level headed to it. I just don't have like the actual decisions made. Yeah. So I don't know what to do. But I like fuck. I wish it didn't have to be like somewhere shitty. Like the idea of having getting it done would be fun as shit. Like the idea of just like even if it was like near you, it was like you could be there, they could be there. Like if I was just like, no, you have to move here for a year, he'd be like, oh, fuck, okay. Like I'll do it. You know yeah. what I mean? But like, it'd be cool to have like the six core people together for a year physically. Am I, am I the first person? First core? Yeah. No, I am. I had I have to be first core. I am. Just you? Just me. Okay. You guys are all secondary tier. No, can they be? I got to be at least. You know like, what a tier is? Yeah, fantasy football rankings. You're in a tier with everybody else. I mean, there's that's no, there's no number of. Ranking. I am fucking. You think you're there with me? Yeah, I was shooting with you in the fucking gym. Shazam. But one thing I will say, um, you did have an interview with uh, Monkey Knife Fights president Nick. How um, do you think that came out? As amazing. Opposed to I thought you know what he Canadians are so fucking nice. He's the like, man. I told you I met him before. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just how he says "big dog" made me laugh every time. Like the big dogs yeah, yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> The one thing that resonated with me um, about him, like, you know, he's a go-getter and you see what he, he says. But um, one thing he said is like, monkey knife fight, if the employee doesn't believe in the startup and willing to sacrifice, they just need to stop or adjust expectations. I think we can use that here. How, do, how When that sticks out to you, how do you apply that to, to big dogs? I think if they're not part of, like, what I got out of it, if something's not working, doesn't mean it needs to be like black and white it doesn't need it means like we just need to cut it off we all just need to adjust our expectations because if we do that and we all have the same common goal we'll get there just in different paths and i think that's what we have to um remember that not everyone's gonna do it the same way or have the same feelings towards everything but at the end of the day if everyone has the same goal it's just different routes to it and that's okay so let's all make sure we're all on the same fucking page that's it it's fair that was a fun interview. Nick's a very smart dude. Very, uh, very energetic. Oh yeah. He was, yeah. I got to meet him in Vegas and it was a, it was a fun night. He was a good guy. He took me out to this STK steakhouse. Best Marg. I think I, I think you were like live texting me that day. Yeah, probably. That was I miss so many things. It's such Heather's fault. What do you mean? Like you, it's not like I went to Vegas by myself. Joking. I just want to get her. Mad. Uh, <laughs> See if she listens throughout the whole fucking video. It's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it goes back again to like what I was saying before. It's like if if everybody, you know, if I take care of everybody, that's going to mean in in its own way. Like each personal person is going to have a different way of being taken care of. You know, if it's like for animal, if it's just more creative flexibility over the entire process, boom. If for someone else it's equity, it's like cool. If someone else is just like job security, a financial, you know, whatever, boom. Like that's that's also the way I look at it. So it's like as long as we're all going towards the same goal, I want to give you the juice that fucking fires you up to get there yeah know? all i want is one weekend a month i'm like a kid like you like you're, you're a divorced parent i'm the child i just want to see you one <laughs> weekend a month <laughs> uh let's go to the fucking roof before the sun goes down yeah facts it's beautiful out here in new york um we get to take advantage of the weather hit fucking seven before the zero so we're out um i hope you all enjoyed this one we laid it all out on the line for you, so you know exactly where our where our heads are at, where the brand is at, where this podcast is at. It's just not good. Nothing's <laughs> good. Like everything's fucking. You know where apart. we're at. It's just not good. I just yeah. wanted to let you know. So let us know, you know, your thoughts on everything that's going on. Not in a negative ass way. If you got kicked out of the Discord, like I don't even give a fuck at this point. Go sign up on Patreon. <laughs> Otherwise, I love you. I'm out. Bye. gonna share with the class i don't share and tell oh doesn't make sense. i thought it i made doesn't, it literally doesn't even, <laughs> i thought i that's <laughs> can't so share good. and not tell is there a situation where you can sh why am i being con like you can share something but not tell them <clears throat> roofies it's why yelling <laughs> <laughs> it's sunday why are you yelling I'm not doing this every time. Okay. How are you feeling today? I also hate that. Like, it's this horrible intro. All right, let's start again.
Are you not going? I'm doing what my therapist told me. You don't have a therapist. I'm your therapist. But yeah, but I did have one. So I feel like they would tell me to breathe in the nose out of the mouth. 